Right now, I don't have any plans apart from Australia, but we are looking at doing a tour because we've got this show that we're putting together. It seems silly not to go and sort of perform at places uh, that we haven't been before or that we have been before. Um, but yes, that it will it will definitely go elsewhere. John Gordon Sinclair, without a doubt, he was funny. He was brilliant as an actor. He was a fantastic company member and I would run to work with him again. He was in She Loves Me. Oh, now that's, this is a difficult question because dancing is, has always been my first passion. Um, so when a show comes along that I get to dance in it as well, that is my ultimate. But I suppose uh, singing uh, is now taking sort of front and center. But I would always have gone for dancing. Well, it was when I, we were doing the bows and there was a drawing pin on stage. I think someone left it there on purpose. But I stepped on it and the Jean Valjean swept me up and carried me off stage. It was a marvellous moment. I made a big drama out of it. Big drama. Oh, I think the funniest or worst thing that's happened to me on stage would be coming in two bars too late in when I was doing She Loves Me in a particular number that was completely about props. And uh, I didn't realise that the orchestra didn't vamp. I thought I could come in any time. So they shot off, I wasn't with them. And I had to stop the orchestra, put all the props back and start again. And it was uh, one of the guys in the show who when I came off stage and collapsed, I went, that was so embarrassing. I because I had to say, stop, stop, stop. I'm so sorry, sorry to the audience. And I said to this guy, that was the worst moment of my career. And he said, darling, we are walking the highest tightrope in the world, live theater. I've never forgotten that, it's a tightrope, live theater. Polly and Crazy For You, because I grew up on the MGM musicals and that was an MGM musical on stage, it was, you know, I got to be Judy Garland um, with Gene Kelly. You know, I got to be, you know, even the, the gown at the end was based on a, a Ginger Rogers gown. You know, it was a replica and it was funny and just, it was everything that I got into musical theatre for. But coming sort of fairly swiftly after that would be, I loved doing Fontaine and I loved doing all the parts in Chicago. I mean, you know, getting to do all three. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Roxy is my favourite because it's her story. She's, she's driving the whole piece and she gets the biggest journey because she's, you know, manipulative and then she has to be really innocent and great and then she gets to be sexy and then she gets to be you know, absolutely desperate. So the, there's the colours of the rainbow in there, whereas with Velma, it's very much money numbers and she's always bringing up the rear with Roxy. And, you know, Mama, just not enough to do. You know, loved doing it for the three months, but just not enough for me to do. The part that got away would be Mary Poppins. They decided, I was 35, and they decided to go younger with it. They went 22. And I felt very much, because I'd grown up with it, um, I wanted so much to be a part of that. But here's where I think things work out the way they're supposed to work out, because, because I didn't get it, I was down to, it was down to the wire between myself and Laura Michelle Kelly. And when I didn't get it, I decided to have another baby. So I had Dolly. Now Dolly wouldn't exist if I hadn't have not got Mary Poppins. So um, I thank Cameron McIntosh for denying me that opportunity. So I've now got a gorgeous daughter. Why am I so fabulous? Well, it depends what time of day, who's 
the other side of the conversation, who's watching, who's not watching. Some people wouldn't think I was fabulous. Some, my daughters wouldn't think I was fabulous when I say they can't have a certain thing, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, but thank you very much for saying I'm fabulous. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say my favourite song would be I Dreamed a Dream and the reason being is because it is the one song that I have sung over and over again and I don't mind singing over and over again. There are songs from other shows that I feel I will pull my own eyeballs out if I have to sing them in the next year because it's just there's only so much you can squeeze out of them. But I dreamed a dream. I think it will always have a very, very special place in my heart because it's been, it's been with me for so long. I did see the gender swap company. I thought it worked really, really well as a woman. In today's society, uh, you know, a woman being 35 and not married is not you know, it, it happens a lot. But it's interesting that one of the things that I thought was great about the gender swap was we don't normally ask a 35-year-old bloke why he's not married, but we do a woman. It's just, whether it should or shouldn't be that way, we do. And I think it's because of the, the fact that women have a time clock. And maybe that's what it comes about the sort of push to get married and, um, and but what role would I want to do if you could have a gender swap it's it do you know what it's very difficult because it would of course be wanting to do Jean Valjean Jean Valjean I don't know if you could do that but you know how could she push the car uphill you know that might be a little difficult um, well, yeah, I don't see why not. Ah, but, yeah, but she can't go to the barricade, can she? Well, no, yeah, mm. she could. She could dress up as a man at that point. Ooh. Okay. Or, of course, Billy Flynn would be a good one. Billy Flynn, spelt B I L L I E. Billy Flynn. That was being called in to do uh, like a, a casting, an audition and uh, Larry was there and I had to improvise with him. So I got it from the improvisation that I did with him. I had no idea that Curb Your Enthusiasm was huge. I was told I was going in for Curb Your Enthusiasm. I'd never heard of it. So I kind of, you know, s swept in, yeah, whatever. And then when I said to people, I've just, yeah, I've just been up for Curb Your Enthusiasm, they went, no, no, oh my God, it's amazing, oh my God, did you meet Larry? Did... And I was like, oh, oh, is it a big deal? And then I got it and realised that it, it, it's kind of cult, it's huge. I had such a good time on it as well. They were really, really welcoming. And I did it with Ricky Gervais, who made me laugh a lot when we weren't on camera. Um, of course, I was deeply professional when we were. In a heartbeat, I would return. I love Broadway. Um, I felt very held there. I felt very welcome. I love the way that you can get a table anywhere in New York if you're in musical theatre. Not so much in England, you know, but in America, in New York, you can get a table anywhere. I'm in Chicago. Oh, fine stable. I don't know what accent that was, but we'll go with French. Um, and uh, I think I would love to do something like, I'd love to do a new show. I'd love to create something on Broadway. Um, although I did putting it together, that wasn't so much, that was more a re review than it. Um, but I think something like Dear Evan Hansen, if I was to slip into something that was already running. Or Waitress. You know, I know I might seem a little on the older side, but you know, I could, I could still have a baby. Well, of course it's Sydney Opera House. I mean, 
so, you know, joking aside, Sydney Opera House, Royal Albert Hall, Carnegie Hall, there are certain places that, as a singer, you want to say you've performed in. Um, so Sydney Opera House would definitely be one. I've done the Royal Albert Hall quite a few times now. It's still special every single time. Um, Carnegie Hall, I think that needs to be next. It was Chicago with my dad and my mum. They'd seen it, they took us back to see it. And all I remember is the puppet number. At the moment, I'd like to do it with Lady Gaga because I think she can sing anything. The other one would be Gene Kelly because he was my crush, my um, idol and an inspiration.